try. Hi there, welcome back to Auto Small Engine. Today we have a 10.5 horsepower to come see engine that's not running. It happens to be on a yard work snowblower, as you can see. We're going to uh, go through it and see what's going on with it. So if you'd like to see diagnostics start to finish and get it running, stick around. So the story behind this unit is the previous owner had this for many years and eventually the electric start went out on it and him and his wife were having a tough time pulling it over to the point where now it doesn't even start with the pull start. So they ended up getting a new one and they gave this one to me. So I'm going to go through what's going on with it. So we'll just go over the basics. We'll make sure our primer is good. Seems to be okay. And our key for our ground seems intact. We'll get that off the hill there. And we'll check the oil. Oh, well, that's a good start. You can see the dipstick's actually broken off in there. So we're going to have to get that out with some needle nose. So you can see it's broken right there. I was unsuccessful in remounting the dipstick to the cap. As you can see, it's completely broken there. So I went ahead and I got a new dipstick right here. If this happens to your Tecumseh and you have the 10 and a half horsepower unit. Part number is 36205. Now we can actually get an accurate level with our new dipstick. See what's going on. Wow, that is way overfilled. So I'm going to check spark. What you want to do is you want to make sure your kill switches are off. So that's one kill. You have to raise your throttle on this because when you bottom it out, it will shut the engine. So you got to raise your throttle up. We're going to hook up our tester. I'm going to show you one of two ways. So. When I diagnose equipment, I just hook up my tester. Pull it over. Yep, see a spark there. I'm going to show you how to check for spark if you don't have a spark plug tester. You need a three quarter on a Tecumseh. Make sure your kills are off. Pull the boot. You want to pull the spark plug out. And then put it back in the boot. You have to ground this prong anywhere and pull the engine over. We have good spark there. So I'd like to put some gas in the carb. So I've got to pull this cover to get access. Sounds dry. So I'd like to test the primer next. I cap that. And we have vacuum. Perfect. It appears the primer is spraying fuel inside the carburetor. However, it was not starting, so I suspect the fuel is in bad condition. On these Tecumseh's there's a valve here so you can actually just push this. To crack the bowl and let some fuel out.
There's a little bit of water in there. I'm going to drain this gas tank. I think we have some water in the fuel. So I have the bowl off now. As you can see, there's still some water in there. The company is really smart. They put this valve on the bottom. That's what that looks like. So when it's actually assembled on the unit, you can just put a little cup under here and push this. And all the water in the bottom or even some gas will go out there, flushing your bowl out on the piece of equipment. In my case, there was so much water in this carburetor, I don't trust it working going forward. All that white there is water and the gasoline is floating on top of it. If you need to rebuild a Tecumseh carburetor or blow it out, I've made a video. I'm going to leave the link on the screen here and also in the description. We're going to drain the gas now, so if you have a shutoff on your tank, make sure it's off and pull this clamp. You can pull your fuel in. There we go. Pop your hose clamp back. And be very gentle with your fuel line. Pop your fuel line off. Put it down in your little bucket. Next, I have a spare piece of quarter inch fuel line. I'm going to put on here just to extend the drain. And then I have an old gas can here for old, any old fuel I drain. Just put that down in there. Pop your cap off. And open the valve. While the gasoline finishes draining out of the tank, I'm going to flush the fuel line. This is not the correct fuel line to begin with, so I'm actually going to be replacing it. But if you had a good fuel line, you just need to pop it off both sides and put two little buckets and then take some carb cleaner and run it through the fuel line until it comes out the other end. The reason you need to flush this line is because there could be water in that line and you want to reintroduce that into your clean carburetor. Um, if you do need to change this fuel line, you don't need to pull the shroud necessarily. You could take a bolt, cut the head off it, stick it in here, and stick your new fuel line on, tape it up, and pull it through. Check your tank condition. If there's a lot of sediment or water inside the tank, put some fresh gas in and flush it through a few times until you don't see anything inside. So I'm going to put some fresh fuel in here. Just a little bit to flush the tank. You can hear it coming back down into my drain. Time to tear down. Close your valve in case there's any residual. Pull your extension off. And you can put your fuel line back if you are reusing it. clamp back on. There you go. I'm going to throw a little fresh fuel in here. Don't forget to turn your fuel valve on if you have one. Let's see if you have fuel in your carburetor again. Put a little rag here and just give it a push. There we go. Time to fire this baby up. We'll give her some primes. You choke. Here we go. Well, that just about does it for this one. Thanks for joining me along with this diagnostic. It ended up being water in the fuel. Completely rebuilt the carburetor. It runs like a top. If you enjoyed this video, 
please like, comment, and subscribe to help support the channel and future small engine content. Subscribe.